Apple's iPhone 16 Pro is now only six months away from release, and believe it or not, the performance benchmarks from a prototype testing model have leaked, and to my surprise, the scores are even better than I ever imagined. And I'm not just saying that because a couple of months back, I estimated the performance of the A18 Pro chip, and I came back with two numbers. 3,100 points in Geekbench 6's single core test, and then 8,200 points in multi-core, which is pretty respectable because it basically matches the performance of the M1 MacBook Pro. But holy smokes, is the actual leaked performance super impressive. The Twitter account TechReef shared them right before deleting his entire account, which makes it seem like he stepped over the wrong toes with this and more recent leaks. But thankfully, I saved his screenshot before it was deleted, and it's showing us that the A18 Pro will have a huge score of 3,570 single core points, which is an improvement of 22.5% compared to the A17 Pro, which is massive. And then even crazier, 9,310 points in multi-core, which is 29.3% faster than the A17 Pro. And then looking at graphics performance, performance, it goes even further in 1440p Aztec Ruins high tier off screen, being 37% faster. So how in the world do you make sense of such a massive improvement compared to what we got with the A17 Pro versus the old A16? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this video, including talking about a brand new core layout, as well as why the A18 and A18 Pro chips will be much more similar than you think. But jumping right into why these benchmarks are so impressive, I personally believe that the A17 Pro chip wasn't fully redesigned from the ground up like everybody was expecting it to be since it's the first three nanometer chip from Apple because to truly take advantage of a new process node technology, you want to fully redesign the core architecture from the ground up. But with the A17 Pro chip, I believe that Apple simply took the A16 chip's five nanometer design, copied it, and ported it over onto the new smaller three nanometer silicon wafers and made a bunch of tweaks like overclocking the cores, adding an additional GPU core and other new silicon like the hardware ray tracing and everything else. And how do we know this? Well, because it's built on TSMC's unique N3B node, which was built specifically for Apple in order to get these three nanometer chips out as soon as possible earlier than everybody else. But the issue is that N3B is not compatible with the future industry-wide three nanometer nodes, including N3E and N3P. So if Apple fully redesigned the core architecture of the A17 Pro chip for the N3B node, they would have had to fully redesign it again for N3E because it's actually different, which is why I believe they took the easy route of simply porting the old five nanometer design onto the new three nanometer node and tweaking it. One piece of evidence for this is that the A17 Pro die is actually smaller than both the A16 and the A15 in terms of square millimeters even going down to the core sizes. The performance and efficiency cores are smaller than the same cores within the A16 and A15 dies. So it seems like Apple simply shrunk everything down and added extra silicon portions like another GPU core and everything else, just to essentially call it three nanometer while stalling until the real fully redesigned three nanometer core architecture, which will finally show up on the A18 and A18 Pro chips. And we actually have evidence for this from the analyst Jeff Poo, who said Apple is increasing the die size of the A18 Pro chip instead of shrinking it like they've been doing, which hints at a full redesign with brand new larger cores. And that right there helps explain the huge improvements that we're getting with these new leaked benchmarks. And I think it's because of a combination of that new fully redesigned core architecture and the addition of some extra cores. Yes, I said extra cores because I personally believe that the A18 Pro chip will come with six efficiency cores instead 
set of four, which is essentially adding 50% more E-cores, which is the easiest way to explain such a big boost in multi-core performance. And if you're excited for new AI features, then definitely try our sponsor Wondershare's Filmora video editing app, which just got some major AI features, including AI translation, STT bilingual subtitles, and AI music generation. Just check out how easy it is to translate a clip by right-clicking on it and going to AI translation, choose the languages, and within moments, we got this. And you guys could tell that the audio quality is definitely better. Können Sie sehen, wie hoch die Audioqualität ist? Auf jeden Fall besser. Or if you want to keep the English vocals, you can use the speech-to-text bilingual subtitles feature, which shows both languages on screen. Filmora also has tons of commercial music to choose from, or you can make your own with the AI music generator, which is actually the background music that's playing right now. So go ahead and download Filmora for free today and enjoy its multilingual magic AI features using the link below. And as for the evidence for why I think Apple's adding two more e-cores, we got a pretty big surprise with the M3 Pro chip that was announced last October, which came with a six e-core layout for the first time on any Apple Silicon chip ever. So I believe that Apple actually borrowed that six E-Core layout from the future A18 Pro chip and gave it to the M3 Pro early to help with efficiency. Because if you think about it, Apple plans their chip designs years in advance. They're probably already designing the future A19 and A20 chips right now, so why can't they borrow future ideas for earlier chips when they really need to. But as far as the GPU cores, Jeff Poo believes that it'll retain the same six core GPU layout, which makes sense because the new GPU core design will be enough to see a huge boost in performance. And not only that, but we had a leak back in November from Kasutami san on Twitter that Apple was working on a new graphene heatsink for the iPhone 16 series to help stop overheating issues, which previously forced Apple to lower the performance of the iPhone chips compared to the iPad chips. So just the new graphene cooling system alone will unlock a bunch of performance that was previously tuned down because of overheating. So both that and the new GPU core architecture can explain the huge performance improvement in graphics. Now, as far as which iPhone chips are coming this year, it's already been leaked that we'll be getting the A18 chip for the regular iPhones and A18 Pro for the Pro models. However, I believe that they'll actually be the same physical chip but with the A18 actually being a binned down version of the full A18 Pro. So my belief is that the A18 Pro chip will come with two performance cores, six efficiency cores, and six GPU cores, versus the regular A18 that'll only have four efficiency cores and five graphics cores, so some of them will be disabled, and that'll give us enough of a difference in total to make people want to buy a pro model iPhone for that extra performance. And why do I believe Apple will do this? Well, because we had leaks with an early iOS 18 code that mentioned that each of the four new iPhone 16 models is getting the same exact system on a chip, identified as T8140 or codename Tahiti, which is what Apple calls the A18 chip internally. And seeing as Apple has already given the current Pro model iPhones the A17 Pro chip, while the regular models have the A16, Apple will 100% move forward with this strategy of giving the Pro model iPhones better chips, as in the A18 Pro, while the regular iPhones will get the regular A18. But secretly, both chips will share the same exact design printed on three nanometer silicon, which means everything about them must be the same. And guess what? It was reported that the regular iPhone 16 models will be getting the same eight gigs of memory as we're getting 
on the 16 Pro models, which makes it a heck of a lot easier for Apple since they'll always just be printing the same chip design. But then Apple will test each A18 chip die and based on the performance of the silicon and if there are any flaws within some of the cores, Apple can simply disable some of those cores and some specific sections of silicon exclusive to the A18 Pro and then sell that as an A18 chip. And dies that perform very well with no flaws will become the A18 Pro chips. And Apple has actually done this in the past with the A12Z chip for the iPad Pro, which turned out to be the same exact chip as the previous A12X, but with a secret GPU core enabled. So I think this new method of printing a single chip for both the A18 and A18 Pro is the smartest move going forward, especially if they want all of the iPhone models to support new features, like let's say all of the AI features we're expecting this year powered by a new, much more powerful neural engine. So if you're gonna want the crazy performance we're expecting with the A18 Pro chip, you're gonna have to buy one of the new iPhone 16 Pro models. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and subscribe by clicking the circle above and definitely check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.